This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 727, Why I'm Taking a Social Media Sabbatical by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Welcome back or welcome for the first time if you're new here. This is where I simply narrate blogs for you, sometimes books, but always with permission from the authors. And today's episode is sponsored by Talkspace, the online therapy company that lets you choose from over 1,500 licensed therapists. Get matched with your perfect therapist who can put you on the path to a happier life. For a special offer just for our listeners, visit Talkspace.com slash old. A listener actually messaged recently saying how happy she is with Talkspace. I'll share that at the end of the episode. So for now, let's hear Tammy's post as we optimize your life. Why I'm Taking a Social Media Sabbatical by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com In Cal Newport's book, Deep Work, he encouraged readers to take a break from social media for 30 days. Newport wrote, quote, by dropping off these services without notice, you can test the reality of your status as a content producer. For most people and most services, the news might be sobering. No one outside your closest friends and family will likely even notice you've signed off, end quote. I don't think Newport's opinions are curmudgeonly. Instead, he brings up important topics to consider partially when I reflect on my increasingly fragmented attention span. Reading Newport's book again motivated me to re-examine my social media habits. According to Moment, an app that tracks how much you use your iPhone each day, I was spending two to three hours a week on Instagram. I find value in services like Instagram, but spending two to three hours a week on one app is excessive. Instagram is fun and a giant personal distraction. Last year, I conquered my Twitter and Facebook scrolling habits. Now I've turned my attention to Instagram because I'm tired of using the app as a tool to procrastinate. On Wednesday, November 22nd, 2017, I deleted the Instagram app from my iPhone and decided to take an extended break from social media. I'm not the only person who struggles with a compulsive need to check various social media accounts. In Our Minds Can Be Hijacked, The Tech Insiders Who Fear a Smartphone Dystopia, Paul Lewis writes, quote, there is growing concern that as well as addicting users, technology is contributing towards so-called continuous partial attention, severely limiting people's ability to focus and possibly lowering IQ. One recent study showed that the mere presence of smartphones damages cognitive capacity, even when the device is turned off, end quote. Lewis's article, academic studies, books, and my recent birthday led to questions about how I use social media. For example, spending two to three hours a week on Instagram isn't on my list of 40 things to do before I turn 40. I love growing older, and the older I grow, I'm more aware of how I spend my time. In Technology, Peace, and Sanity, Alexandra Franzen wrote, quote, a few years ago, I sat down and did some math. I tallied up how many minutes I was spending on Twitter each day. Then I multiplied that number by 75 years because I'm hoping I'll live that long. Here's what I discovered. If I continued using Twitter in the same way, by the end of my life, I would spend 1.8 million minutes of my life on Twitter. That's 1,250 days or about 3.4 years. I kept staring at that number, 3.4 years, and I felt sick to my stomach. It didn't seem possible, but math doesn't lie. This was the future I was building through my daily choices, end quote. Franzen's words caused me to sit down and do some math. I came up with similar numbers. I could have written the same paragraph, just substitute Twitter for Instagram in the sentences. When I think about how I can use an extra two to three hours a week, a lot of things come to mind, like going to additional CrossFit classes, reading, learning French, napping, going on adventures with Logan, etc. Also, it's worth considering the work of Dr. Alex Sujung Kim Peng. Peng is a tech forecaster, a scholar at Stanford, and author. In Bored and Brilliant, Manush Zomorodi profiled Peng's work and research. Zomorodi wrote, quote, On the Zen tech front, Peng discovered a community of Buddhist monks and nuns who are avid social media users. They blog, tweet, update their status, and hold online meditation sessions. The mindset of these modern monks blew him away because they don't see a division between virtual and physical reality. For them, all realities are the same. Distraction doesn't come from devices or people or things, they positioned. 
it is an internal problem, end quote. If my tendency toward distraction and procrastination is an internal issue, then the solution lies within me too. Ping's approach to contemplative computing inspired me to take a break from social media. Until 2018, I won't be on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I haven't taken an extended break from social media since I wrote my first print book, and that was in 2010. I'm curious to see how the break will impact me. I won't be totally offline because I'll be blogging regularly and sharing updates with patrons. And last but not least, I'm still taking a daily photo of my morning view, but I'm not sharing the photo on social media. I'm also pondering whether or not I wanna continue my photography project. The five-year anniversary of the project is on January 1st, 2018, and five years feels like a nice number to end on. You just listened to the post titled Why I'm Taking a Social Media Sabbatical by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com. And big thanks again to my sponsor for today's episode, Talkspace. Talkspace is the online therapy company that lets you send your therapist audio messages, video messages, text messages, or you can do a live video chat. Talkspace therapists are fully licensed and have thousands of hours of supervised professional training. A listener wrote in, I'm just gonna read some of this. Quote, I contacted Talkspace with the discount we can use for being OLD listeners. Wow, I've worked with other counselors in the past, but this service is so much better. The counselor is wonderful. I really like this style of counseling because it allows me to communicate in the moment. Before, things would happen, but before I could be seen by my counselor, I would convince myself that whatever it was wasn't as bad as I thought. Now I'm actually dealing with things and getting the help I was seeking, end quote. That's a true message from a listener of the show. That was so cool. And actually, I hadn't thought about that, the real-time aspect of when you're feeling a certain way, you can get in touch with someone. So yeah, that discount she mentioned is $30 off your first month by using the code OLD or go to talkspace.com slash OLD to check it out. And now back to the post. I've definitely done some social media sabbaticals in the past. I did one back in the days of MySpace, if anyone remembers that. That lasted a long time, actually. And then after business school, I volunteered at a meditation center in the Rocky Mountains for a month, and I was offline for those 30 days, which was refreshing. I think it's worth trying, or you can try using the app she mentioned, Moment, to see how many hours you clock in for various apps. That might be for iPhone only, though. But in any case, I love life experiments like these. You always walk away learning something. I'll leave it there for today. Have a happy Thursday. Hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.